morning. My name is Father Bill Lytle and I'm Director of Christian Formation here at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. And I'd like to welcome you to our daily reflection on the Gospel lesson from the Book of Common Prayer Daily Office Lectionary. Today is Monday, the 23rd after Pentecost, and our lessons are taken from Proper 26. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our lesson today is taken from the Gospel according to Luke, beginning in the 12th chapter at the 49th verse. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, It is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, There will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? And why do you not judge for yourselves what is right? Thus, when you go with your accuser before a magistrate, on the way make an effort to settle the case, or you may be dragged before the judge, and the judge hand you over to the officer, and the officer throw you in prison. I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the very last penny. Here ends the lesson. On our gospel lesson today, we have hard words from Jesus. I think for many of us, shocking words from Jesus, because so many of us have an image of Jesus in our minds that just doesn't match up with what he says in this reading today. We have been taught by the culture of the church and, and the culture at large to accept an image of gentle Jesus, meek and mild, um, the Sunday school room wall portrait of Jesus. Jesus who wouldn't hurt a fly and certainly never say anything unpleasant or do anything to make anyone angry or upset. The problem with that image is that it's not true. That's not the Jesus we meet in Scripture. That's not the Jesus who is the Son of God, the Jesus who is our Lord and Savior. Surely Jesus is gentle. Surely he is meek. Surely he cares for those who are in need and who are helpless. And even surely he brings peace. He brings peace into our lives and ultimately he brings peace into the world. But he does not bring a peace that is a mere avoidance of conflict. If we think that's the peace he has come to bring, then we're surely mistaken. He has come not to bring that peace, but a sword. He has come to cut us down right to the bone and the marrow, to lay bare everything in our lives that is amiss and that needs his grace and his salvation. And not just personally, but as societies and communities and families as well. So the question we must ask ourselves is this, is the Jesus that we worship, the one that we serve, the one that we offer our prayers to, is he gentle Jesus, meek and mild? Because if he is, we're in trouble because we are worshiping a false idol. The truth is if, that if Jesus is not casting some fire into our life, if his presence is not causing some sort of sword to pierce us, whether personally or in our communities or families, 
then perhaps it's not the true Jesus, the Jesus we meet here in Luke chapter 12, that we worship and that we serve. But the good news is this, this Jesus who has come to cast fire on the earth has come to make all sad things untrue. He has come to make all things right. And he has come to do the difficult work involved in that. And that work was accomplished for us and for all the world upon the cross, the sign of our peace, but also a symbol that still brings a sword into the world. Let us pray. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.